to find out. It was very sad. I was in New York. July 18th, uh, we finished working together. I went to New York. I was putting together, I was doing a big series with a, a big layout with a, a cover for a magazine called Cosmopolitan Magazine. Also, we had done this book together. Mm -hmm. I had put it all together. And um, on a Friday afternoon, I was in my office at the Sunday newspapers. I was a correspondent. And I get a phone call. And Marilyn Monroe is calling. This is Friday, uh, August uh, 4th. August 3rd, I guess, yeah. And uh, 1962. And she wants to know how things are going. I said, fine, everything looks great. The book, I've got it all together. And she says, I've got to see you. It's very important. I says, I'm trying to put everything together, Marilyn. George, she said, it's very important. There are many things we have to talk about. And there are some things that are very, very shocking that you must know about. You must come out. She sounded very sad. I said, if you feel it's that urgent, then I'll come out. I'll, this is Friday. I'll try to get out there Monday. I'll fly out Monday. And so uh, that weekend, I went to the country. And uh, Sunday morning with my brother-in-law, we went to a little store to get some rolls and things. And I sat in the car listening to the radio music. And my brother-in-law went in to buy some things. And uh, he comes running out. And he says, did you hear it on the radio? I said, what? I said, I didn't hear it. It's music. He says, I just heard on the radio in the shop, Marilyn Monroe is dead. And I turned white. I said, I can't believe it. I'm supposed to leave Monday to see her. I said, is this a joke? It's not nice to, to make jokes like that. He says, I swear it's not a joke. Yeah. Hey DrewTubers, it's Drew. Welcome back to my channel, California Pick, and I have a very special, two very special guests. Let me introduce themselves. First, the gentleman. Hello, my name is Xavier Clemente, the protege of George Barris. And this is? Caroline Barris, I'm the daughter of George Barris. And she is the daughter of the photographer George Barris, uh, Marilyn Monroe's good friend and photographer. George Barris took the last photographs of Marilyn right out right out on the beach in Santa Monica that I've shown you many times in my videos go check that out but I got the honor to meet these two folks here today and to talk about Marilyn and George's work and I just have to thank you guys so much for talking to me today and um, we brought up some really incredible subjects now Carolyn was born after your your father yes. left. I wish I would have been born. I had a chance to meet him. Never get that. The country, right? Yes, exactly. And um, I was now born in France. In France, after Marilyn's death. Yes. Okay. And um, now I asked Carolyn about this subject about um, George Barris said on Larry King's show that Marilyn had called George, you know, the weekend before she died, saying that there was something really urgent. She wanted to tell him that something was very wrong. Yes. And could he come back to L.A.? Right. But he was shooting something for Vanity Fair or something like that, or Cosmopolitan, something like that. Yeah, and he was in New York City, and he says he couldn't leave, but he could come that Monday. I see. Would he be okay? And then it was too late. Yes. Yes. If he'd known, he says to this, for years, he says, if I would have gone back in time, and I knew, I would have definitely gone and seen it before that. But and, and he, he didn't know how urgent it was, and he... He had no clue. He says he wished he could have. And what we speculate is that she was talking about what? I'm thinking about the Kennedys. I'm thinking she was going to come out that Monday and say something, and, uh, and that she was being tapped. So I'm, I'm sure that they knew something was up, and I think that what happened to her was no accident. Was your phone, was your dad's phone being tapped as well? I don't know, but I do know that one after she died, my father moved to France. And he says, when I asked him why, he says it's because he was being haunted by the press and he wanted to go to France. But I think he was probably, there's a lot more going on and he would never really go into it. I see. Talk about it. I see. I just think that he was probably afraid too, because why would you move to France? Right. Suddenly, right after that. Yeah, it's out of his character just to like right. bounce out, out the country. Yes. You know, and 
just leave. Like, you know, like, like that fast or something. It is. He's been here his whole life. He, he works a lot in New York. He's exactly. a photographer. Right. Why, I mean, why leave? Exactly. Yeah, like the Sam Giancana's were involved. The Kennedys were involved. All that triangle circle, let's say, you know, a lot of them in the disappearance. So, especially George, afterwards. Yeah, and George yes. was a photographer, so he took pictures of Sinatra before King Sinatra and Sinatra right. on sure. Paramount and was like intertwined with these celebrities and was gravitate to the stars before they even became stars. Yes. Was, like Sinatra, Steve Queen, Marilyn. So, Charlie had that gift of gab wow. to point them out. So, it's really out of character yeah, for him he was to a, leave he was, town. I noticed he was very private in some subjects. Yes, and it seemed like that. There was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Undercover, and I don't mm -hmm. really talk about it. Yes. And to this death, he wouldn't. To the end of his life, he, he didn't wouldn't. really. No. Mm hmm. Called Some Like It Hot. Oh. I watched Some Like It Hot. The following July, we have a boat party. I meet Caroline. I'm really? Like, like, something's going on here. It's I don't know what's like, going that's on. That's crazy. Guiding. I feel like guiding. I the costume from Marilyn's grave. They didn't realize it. A couple of weeks later, I screened the movie and then met George. And George is like, oh, well, why don't we uh, work together and do something? Darn. I'm like, I don't know, George. I'm not really too much of a Marilyn fan, but I don't really know too much about her. Uh huh. You know what I mean? My sisters are and all that other stuff. Uh huh. We collaborated, we sat, and we bonded. Darn. In, in Hollywood. Yeah. Wow. So, and now in Hollywood lands everywhere. We're in Korea, New York. Tell us what Italy. that is. Give it, I'll give you a plug. What, what's going on with that? In Hollywood lands, basically uh, preserving his legacy and his works with Marilyn and other, uh, you know, celebrities that he's worked with. Wow. On set, because he was commissioned by like, Fox, Cosmopolitan, all the, you know, the so big just, shots right. in those days. So we got all that information so, and created in Hollywood town website also. Nice. Like, Derivatives. Right. Sweet. We've collaborated with artists too, with uh, Dennis McKay and George Ferris, and we did some uh, beautiful artwork with Matt Madas pictures. Wow. Both uh, limited edition autograph things that we're selling on IHL. It was really great because we get to do a lot of things that. Now here's met him, we can now here's the controversy. A lot of controversy. We can talk, talk about them all, but yeah. there's. I shown you this um, the secret love nest of Marilyn Monroe, JFK, RFK, which was down on the beach in Santa Monica, and I showed your father's one of the, the last session or the last session professional okay. session that Marilyn had with your father or anybody, and there's a picture of the love nest right behind Marilyn's head. I just asked Carolyn was whose decision was it to go down to the Santa Monica Beach and shoot right outside the Peter Lawford mansion which is also right next door to the Samuel Goldwyn house which is the secret love nest and I asked uh, Carolyn whose decision was it and we both kind of she thought we both said it was Marilyn's decision well because it was Marilyn's to and my dad's uh, collaboration to work on a book and to tell the truth so she you know says okay this is what I want to do this they all collaborated together. Yes. So, that's so she, she was speaking the truth, but that didn't say it. Exactly. That's right. She wanted to tell the truth. Yes. That was the whole idea of doing the book. That's why he did this long interview with her for weeks on end and asked questions. That's crazy. She has something to say. Yes. She wanted to say. And I think, like you said, she said in many more words than we expected. And I felt very excited to tell Carolyn and Xavier that the house behind her, her head was the house that the affairs went on in, and that Marilyn was, her phone calls were not being re returned by. Robert Kennedy and she was saying in that picture hey guys I'm sending you a message I know you're gonna see it wink wink nod nod this is where it happened yes. and then amazing yes. and uh, we also talked about the sweater that Marilyn was wearing the um, the Mexican what's it was called yes. uh, it's like a sailor uh, sweater. A sweater. Yeah. And she was wearing the sweater because it was Who cold. It was cold. Vegan, I guess. Uh huh. Alpaca or something of wool. It was a wool sweater. Yeah. It recently sold at auction for some big dollars. I know. Wish, uh, my Didn't dad. Father gave it that to her. Yeah, my, she already had it. No, I think my dad bought all those clothes. Oh my gosh. He did, he did all the wow. shopping. Wow. Yeah, because all the Poochie stuff she would yeah. wear, George would go out to Poochie in Beverly Hills and actually give it to her. Wow.
was not a big fashion. I mean, she was not a big jewelry hound. She didn't have much jewelry at all. She In fact, she would get it loaned to her. Right. And she was pretty simple in her dresses and dressing, but you're right. She loved Pucci. That was her favorite. Yes. And uh, I also asked Carolyn about this uh, towel that was uh, wrapped around Marilyn in the last photograph of her life. In some photographs, it looks green, and in other photographs, it looks uh, orange or gold. Right. And um, her last photograph... She was getting cold at the end of the day, and she said, George, she didn't complain all day, and then she said, George, I'm really cold. She was shivering. She said, George, can we go now? And he goes, I have one last photograph, and let me just get this last photograph. And then what did, what did uh, Marilyn say to your father? This one's for you, and she blew him a kiss. Just how incredible that was. And who would have known that would have been the last photo shoot? Exactly. He had no idea. Weeks before, that was July 13th, which was actually a Friday the 13th. Yes. Oh, it was. Which is really interesting. Whoa. Very interesting. I just realized that. Now, a lot of people said that Marilyn was in a great state of mood because... Oh, she was excited. She was working on all those new projects. She was... Was not she got rehired with the $500,000 yeah, exactly. advance or, you know, a raise. Exactly. She was also planning to do a book with your father, exactly. from what I understand. Yeah, she was in charge of her, you know, control of her life. There was nothing that she couldn't do. She wasn't going to commit suicide no. when she made all these promises. No. Marilyn was very, very um, considered, even though she was, she was very late. Yes. Strong woman. Yes. She had very, a lot of loyalty to her friends. Yes. And George Barris was her friend, not exactly. just her photographer. And what would he call her? What would Marilyn call her if she's ready to commit suicide? I need to meet you on Monday. That's right. You don't tell somebody I'm meeting you Monday and commit no. suicide, right? No, you don't call him and say, no, you don't call this guy who's your photographer and your friend and say, there's something really wrong exactly. and, you know, and have it be like something trivial. Right. It's got to be something big that Obviously you're... Obviously you can tell something's important and then the fact that she died that weekend, it tells you, well, it points to like, hey, listen, something was definitely wrong. Your dad must have been heartbroken no, because... He he could have possibly he cried to saved her. I know. He says he was in New York City with his brother in the car, and he heard it over the radio. Oh. He says he was, his brother says, guess what I just heard over the radio, and he was dev devastated. Oh, he couldn't believe it. He, he says he was in shock. And then he goes, oh. Uh, the, the story was Robert F. Kennedy came out to talk her down, you know, right. to stop calling and yes. stop, you know, so she was out, out of control. Yes, she, was. she was a scorned woman. Yes. And you know what they say about a scorned woman? Yes. And she probably was going to speak at that Monday. I have a Absolutely. She never had an opportunity. Yes. Sure she didn't. Wow. And